So I've got my strap done. So the next stage is to make the actual bag. So I need to make the body of the bag next. Now I'm going to use 20 sticks to make the body of the bag. And what you're going to do is, I'm going to move these out of the way just now. To get the measurement, because I'm doubling up the wool like this, you can just use two strands, remember, it's up to you, or one, whatever you want, it's up to you. Now, to get the length, what I did was, I just measured the size I wanted. So that would be the front, that would be about the back, and that amount would be this part here. Now what I did was I just added a good bit extra to make your little fringes. So what I did, I just doubled that over like that, and then I cut it, or you can just fold it over like that, and that gives you the great big length that you need. I know it looks a lot, but once it's doubled over on your stick like this, once it's in the stick like this, it's the right length. So that gives you that amount for the, the back, that amount sort of for the front, and then you've still got enough to do your turnover, whatever length you want to do your little turnover part. And then enough left for to tie off at the top and at the bottom like this. So that's how I did that. Now I'm going to show you something else. You're going to wonder how did she manage to hold 20 sticks. So how did I manage to hold all of these? Now what I did was... I made myself this. Now this is just two scraps of wood. I drilled, put them together. See, it's just scraps of wood. I drilled a hole right through here, right through this end. But on the bottom, I've moved it further down so that when I pop my sticks in, it's got some room to go there. Now, I've put these butterfly hoops on. You can put whatever you want on. You can make these as big as you like. You can make them as small as you like. Now, it just shows you what you can do just to trap your sticks in. So, I've just came up with this little idea. You can buy kits that are already done. I'm going to loosen that end off a little bit. So, all I did when I made the bag was I just... Took my stick, just put your rule to the side and stick the stick in. Just stick your stick in between there like that. Now for the first one, I'm going to tighten it just to hold it a little bit. It will be a little bit wobbly, but once you manage to tighten it all up, I'm going to tighten that end. I'm not going to tighten the middle, just so I can get some other sticks in. It's just a little bit awkward being on this table here. So all I did was that. Now I'm going to put my 20 sticks in. Just stand them up. Tighten that one in a little bit. Now they will wobble around a little bit, but don't worry about that. Once you start your weaving, it'll be fine. I mean, this didn't cost me anything. I already had the bolts and I already had the scraps of wood. You can make this smaller, or what I'm suggesting is, even if you're using round ones of these, you could still do this, or you could buy a whole kit. It's up to you. These flat ones, they were only $1.75 a packet. I bought quite a few packets of them, so even if you make your own, you can make this really big and you can actually make rugs with it, it's up to you. Now just sort of judge your spacing, 
So I'm going to put 26 in here. I can straighten it up a bit once I tighten it a little bit more. Now these sticks are not perfect. Some are slightly thicker than others, but that's no worry. At £1.75, I'm not worried about that in the slightest. So just push your sticks in. It's all tightened up, it'll be fine. Now, if you can't make one of these or don't have any, what you can do is you can just, you can do it this way. You can take your sticks, like I showed you earlier, I'm going to pull this over to the edge. Just never mind my wiring from my camera. Now, what you can do is you can just lay them at the edge of a table, to sit at a table and hang them over the edge like that, where you need them. You can put something heavy on them to hold them and then start your weaving until you've got a good few rows. Push it down and then you can actually hold it in your hand. So I'm going to continue to put my sticks into here. Now you can make the gaps bigger with these sticks. I'm going to tilt it that way so you can actually see it. It looks a little bit rustic, <laughs> but it will work. It's worked already. I have made one bag already on it. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to finish putting the rest of my sticks on and I'm going to tighten this up and then I'll come back and I'll show you it. So I've got my sticks tightened in to my little homemade clamp, as you can see. I've got it spaced out to where I'm happy. And all you do, tie it here and then start your weaving. Now, don't weave too tight. If you weave too tight, you're going to start making your sticks pull away in far too far. So just keep it nice and even as you weave. If you feel that they're moving in too far, then just slacken it off. I'm going to turn it this way. This is how easy this is to hold it. If you make this smaller, you can make these little clamps as big or as little as you want. Now all you do is just go up and down and pull it down. It will all bring itself in together like it did for the strap. Now I'm just getting myself into a little mess because of the way I'm holding it. Now, like I said, if you don't have one of these little things, if you don't have any wood where you can make it, you can actually just put your sticks over the edge of your table like that and then start weaving. You'll still be able to keep them all together. Once you've got a lot of weaving on it, you can actually take it off and then just lean it against your knee as well. As long as you don't pull your weaving too tight. I'm doing it this way so you can see what I'm doing. So my sticks are still a little bit wobbly at the top. But that will all tighten in once we've got our weaving on. So this one's a little high because this is where the screw is at the bottom. So that one's just sitting on the top of the bolt screw thing in it. So all you do is just keep on weaving until you get the length. You get the length that you want for the front and for the back. Like that. And once I've got that length, I'll show you how I took it in to make that flap sit nice and neat. So I'm going to get on with that. I'm going to keep weaving until I've got it to the length that I want the body of the bag. And then I'll be back to show you how to bring it in to make a flap over if you want a flap over the top of your bag. So I'll be back in a while because that's going to take me a good few hours anyway. So I'll see you again soon. So this is what I've got so far. Now what I've been doing is, if you keep it in, if you make a clamp like this and if you keep it in, all you have to do 
is when you get up so far, it's just loosen it off like this. Or whatever way you've built it. It is only two sticks, like I said before. Take your weaving out. Now I've got it like this. Now just pull your sticks up. Pull your... Start wherever it's... A, it's a little bit fiddly doing it this side. So just pull some of your weaving through like this. Just pull your sticks up. Not all the way. Make sure you keep some of your stitches on like I showed you with the when we did the handle. So we're just going to pull the sticks up a little way. Pull all them up through. As long as you've not done your weaving too tight, this should be quite easy. It's a little bit fiddly, but it's easy enough. And that end one. There we go. Now what I'm going to do, you can either push them back through like this. Push them all back through like that and then put it back in here like this if you want but I think I've got excuse me for that I think I've got my weaving done quite well make sure I've got all my threads around the right way so what I'm going to do with it now is, don't worry about that, but as you, as you continue to weave, that'll all straighten out, pull these sticks up a little bit more. Now as all this moves down, this will all straighten out. That's just where I had it poked through. If you look at this side, it's all nice and straight. Now it will straighten out because all this part here is all straightened out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually push it like this. You could do it like this, which is really easy. I get my weaving rule. Can do this over the top of the camera. I'm going to bring it up a little bit so you can see a little better. So if you don't have a little clamp, like I said, if you put it over the edge like this then you can still weave you can bring it over a little bit as long as you don't weave it too tight you could still weave it like this like this so you can either put it in a little homemade clamp or you can just put it to the edge of your table like this and weave your sticks So I'm just going to do it this way until I've finished. So I'm going to continue with my weaving. And it is, will be okay once it comes off there. It'll all relax as you can see. It's all smoothing itself out. The size of the bag I want. Now I have to do the same amount again so that I've got my bag and then I'll do my flip over part so just continue weaving now it is just the second bag I've made so it's not going to be perfect but it's going to be really good and I'm really really pleased with it and I'm really liking doing this it's very therapeutic So I'm going to continue with my weaving and then I'll come back and I'll show you what I've done.
That is all smoothing out already. So if you're going to do it like this, with just putting your pegs or your sticks down, find something that's non-slippy to put underneath it and it's going to save it from moving around like that. Now, to make the top part of the, the flap over for the bag, I'm going to weave along to these end three. I'm not going to weave... I'm not going to weave these three and when I come back I'm not going to do these. So the way I do it, I've just been doing it like this. Just your under over and then push it down. Just make sure you don't do it too tight. Now I'm not going to do those three. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come back and then I'm going to do my over under this way. and then over, miss those three, and then I'm just going to work back. So that's all I'm going to do, is I'm just going to work on these pegs. I'm not going to work with these three here. So what I'll do is I'll pull my pegs out, just smooth it as you pull it. These are the ones I'm going to be working on. And don't worry about it ruffling up like that. Your strands are down here. So they will pull up. So we'll pull them all up first. These are the ones we're going to be working on. I'm not going to be working on those three at either end. There we go. So I'm going to leave those three there. Smooth all this back out so that all the strands come up through the bottom. You just need to keep smoothing it so that your strands that are here will go up so your or come down rather it will all smooth itself out once we've got it all finished so what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue just weaving over and under these sticks and work my way back only on these centre ones. So that one going over, going over that one. So now we're going under and then over. And then over and then come under. So what you're going to do is just keep making sure, keep making sure that you're doing it properly and you don't have any big loops. If you've got any big loops, it means you've went under, under, or over, over. So just put them back to the edge. Them out a little bit more level. Doesn't matter if they're not level or anything, as long as you're doing your over unders and you're not doing it too tight. And then back under. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weave just these sticks. So as you can see, this area is going to start to grow and this area won't. So this will stay here and I'm only going to work with this amount of sticks here. I've got two, four, six, eight, ten. 12, 14. I'm working just with the 14 and this I'll make the flap over for the bag. So once I've got that done and got this all smoothed out, I'll come back and I'll show you what to do next. So now I've got this flap over to the size that I want it, I'm just going to cut my wool. So I'm just going to tie that off in there. Now I've got my little darning needle. That's a plastic darning needle. And I've got my scissors. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pull the sticks out. And then this will push the rest of it down these long end threads. 
So I'm just going to pull my sticks out carefully. I'm going to cut it, take the sticks off. Just make sure that you're leaving yourself some wool at the bottom. We only need enough up here so that we can use the darning needle and tidy up the edges. So I'm going to pull all my sticks out, these ones as well. So I'm just making sure that I'm leaving myself some wool at the bottom so that I can tie it in. So I'll remove all my sticks and then I'll come back and show you what to do. Taking three away, then just take two away and it'll make this part wider, like that. Now, the strap, like I've showed you before, it's going to go down here. The strap is going to get sewn in there like that. So the strap will be inside there, sew it up there, and then we're going to sew it up there. So it'll be like this one. It'll be like this. So this is the strap of the purple one. It's just sewed in there like that. And it's sewed on that side. And the hoop becomes the handle. And then you have your flap over end like this. And I just tied those ones in. So we'll just do the same with this. So I'm going to just put my darning needle in. I'm going to do two at a time if I can get it through my darning needle. It's going to be a little bit quicker. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to over sew it just to tighten that in a little bit and then I'm going to go up through this little tube. Pull it out through that way and then carefully cut your end off and then smooth it out and then I'll do the next two and I'm going to work all my way along that edge and that's going to give me the nice neat edge for that part of the bag. I'm going to do the same with these, I'm going to over sew them in and the same here but up here all I'm going to do up here is I'm going to tie them but you need to make sure you tie this part to this part so take two of those ones and two of those ones and tie them just tie them in a knot and then these ones you can tie to these ones like that and this one tie it to this loose one like that and then work your way along take these two and your next two and you can just tie them in Just 
just make sure you're getting two from there and two from that other side to tie it so it doesn't unravel then give that a tie you can just stitch it in it's up to you then take these two and these two from that one and tie those in then take the two from here and the two from this one that will tie these two lines in to do at this end is I'm still going to take two two from this line and two from this line but as you can see I'm still left with two that could pull out so I'm just going to tie it to these two now that's that part done just smooth them out What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim it. So that they're all roughly the same size. Just put that away. So that's that part done. That's your fold over part done. So that's the fold over part all done. I'm going to zoom back out. Yeah. So that's that part done. Now what I'm going to do now with these, I'm definitely going to sew these in. So if your darning needle is big enough, do it two at a time for speed. If not, then just do it one at a time. It's up to you. So I'm just going to sew through here once, I'm going to move that over, sew in between one little stitch and then I'm going to take, make sure you're on the wrong side. So that's the inside. So I'm going to take my thread down inside there so it disappears. Neaten it off. That's that bit done. Then I'll do the same for these and I'll work, I'll do that to those and then I'll do the same to there and then I'm going to sew in all of that with the needle. I'm going to sew it in. Okay, so now I've finished. I've over sewed all those tassels on the end and I did the same here and this is how your bag is going to look. Now I've got the strap here. Now what we're going to do is Make sure it's level at each side. So this bottom part will come up a little bit and we're going to sew this strap in here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to over sew it from the outside I mean it is weaving so you can sew it in from the inside if you like I'm going to do it this way and I'm going to do it with two strands of wool I'm just going to tie a little knot here to begin with 
then I'm going to tuck that in there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to over sew. It might be called blanket stitch, I'm not too sure. Over the top of the joints like this. Now when you get to the corner, just make sure your two edges here are the same. You can pin it if you want. And that's going to keep my edges the same. What I'm going to do is, to remember that you can either do this with a stitch, I'm actually just going to put this through here, just to hold it in place so it doesn't wander and go too far up. You can do that with a piece of wool if you want. So that's going to keep that in the right place. So when I sew the bottom, when I sew the bottom of the bag, my bag edges are going to be level here. So I'm going to continue to sew my strap. up this way. I'll put a couple of stitches in the corner just to hold it snug. So I'm going to sew up to here and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to sew up to the same place here on this one. Sew up this side. Once I've done that, I'll do the same to this side and then I'll come back and show you what the bag looks like when it's finished. Okay? Now here is my finished bag. Now you can pop a button on if you want to put a button on or maybe a blue one might go better but I don't have a blue button. You can put a button on. You can put some velcro to stick your flap over or you could just leave it. It is long enough just to be left. Now this is what the bag looks like. It's a little bit rustic but it is weaving. And it's really quite thick, as you can see. And inside the bag, there's plenty of room. You can make these bigger if you buy more sticks. It's up to yourself. Or what you can actually do is you can make two and then sew them together to make a longer bag. Or you could do it long ways like that and then sew two together. It's up to you. You can make loads of different items with this. It's up to yourself. And <laughs> I love it. I mean, I think this turned out really well. The only one thing I will say is I really think I should have only have done two pegs. I should only have taken two pegs away. I should have left not three. If you saw earlier... I stopped weaving the three pegs on the end to do this flap, but I really feel I should have actually have just left two pegs on the end, and that would have been a little bit wider, but it's still really nice, and I still like it. 
I think it's brilliant. Now, I haven't lined it because my sewing skills are absolute rubbish. But I've got a nice neat enough edge along the top of the bag. And I think for either on the beach or, I mean, you put your purse in there, it's not going to fall out or anything like that. Or if you put your phone in it or some bits and bobs, it's going to be fine. It's not going to fall out unless you put a pen or something and it's going to poke out through it. You can line it, but you don't have to. Now, this is my weaving bag. Now, what I've decided to do, I was going to give this away as a, as a little giveaway, but I still do it. So please just, if you get this, if you're the lucky person or sort of a lucky person to win this, then I do apologise for the width of this, but I still like it. Now what I'm going to do is, for my little giveaway, is I'm going to give away this bag. Two packets of these sticks. These are from the play box and they're weaving needles. I'll leave a little link in the bottom to where I bought these and so I just hope the Amazon seller gets more of these in. But there's 20 in there, so it's ample to make like your bag. Or if you do it in sections, you can make it bigger. I'm also going to... This is... It's Nouveau Double Knitting. And it has a speckle through it. So I think it will weave up really nice. And it's nice and soft as well. So I'm going to give you three balls of that. That is 100 gram balls. So that's 300 grams. To win this is subscribe to the channel and leave a message at the bottom of this tutorial. Only this tutorial. Now this giveaway is only going with this tutorial. So if you're on one of my other tutorials and you leave a comment, you won't be in the competition for this. So to win this giveaway, you have to be a subscriber. So get subscribing to the channel and leave a comment. And it would be really great if you liked the video to give it a little thumbs up as well. So, and then I will choose a winner. It doesn't matter where this winner's from. I will post this out to the winner. I'm going to give it two weeks. So you've got two weeks to get your comments on, get subscribing, get your comments on, and then I will draw a winner. So all it leaves me to say is, thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, then please subscribe. Now, if you are a subscriber, you can still go in the competition. As long as you're a subscriber, get subscribing. I do get a subscribers list, so I can check it. If you've left a comment and you're not a subscriber, then I'm sorry, you're not going to be in this competition. You have to be a subscriber. So subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and if you like the video, give it the thumbs up. So all it leaves me to say is thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, even if you're not going to join in the competition. You don't have to leave a comment. But everybody who leaves a comment, and if they are a subscriber, they will be in my little competition, my very, very first three giveaway. And I will post this to the person who is chosen. Also, I'd like to thank everybody just for watching, all the people who have subscribed already. Please come and join my craft group, which is called Crafty Twints on Facebook. All crafters are welcome. Any age, any, any gender, anybody. Just if you craft and you want to share your ideas or you want to see some new ideas or even just some post some pictures of the crafts that you've made, then come and join us. It is free. And you'll find us on Facebook. And I'll leave a little link in the bottom of the video as well. Where you can come and join our craft group. So it just leaves me to say. Until the next tutorial. Happy crafting. And I'll see you all again soon. Now goodbye.